This first question says, what do you do at your job? Do you get lonely living by yourself? If you were ever going to move from Toronto, where would you go? Do you have a boyfriend? How do you do it? I know online is highlight, but you look so put together. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be sitting down and painting my nails with you while answering some of your questions. So I asked on Instagram for some questions and you sent them in if you are not following me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is prettypolishesyt if you wanna go ahead and follow me over there for more frequent updates. But thank you to everyone who asked a question for today's video. So I was inspired today to do a sunflower design. I pulled a few shades from my collection that I think will work perfectly for this design. I actually saw um, a look on the Sally Hansen Instagram account that I was just so inspired to do a sunflower design. So I pulled some different shades. Um, before I get into answering any of the questions, I'm gonna talk through some of the products that I'm using in case you're curious that I'll be using throughout. So the yellow shade that I chose, and I honestly think it's so perfect for a sunflower shade, is this yellow from OPI and it's from the new spring collection. The collection is called Mexico City and the shade is called Don't Tell a Soul. It is like a sun shade, perfect for sunflowers. And then I'm gonna use this gold shade that's actually from the same collection as a bit of an accent. It won't be too prominent in this design, but I just saw these two shades together and thought that it went perfectly and it'll look good with like some of the accents of a sunflower. Again, this is from the same collection and it is called Susie's Slinging Mezcal. A fun fact is that OPI's founder, her name is Susie, so often you will see a shade named after her in a lot of their larger collection releases. So this one was named after her. And then I'm using these two shades from the Sally Hansen Good Kind Pure Collection. And these ones are vegan, plant-based, and 15 free. So these are their newer polishes, really, really cool. I have swatches of the whole collection that is available in Canada. If you are curious, I will link that on the screen. But these two are some shades that I thought would look pretty with this design that I have in my mind. And this one is called White Tea. And then this one is called Raw Cocoa. And then for base and top Co. I'm using these two polishes from the Sally Hansen Beautifier collection, which is their nail care line. And this is the nail primer. I've had this bottle forever and it's still going strong. It has not gotten thick. I just really like it as a nail primer. And then this one is their fast dry top coat. And I love a good fast dry top coat. And then I just have a couple of dotting tools over here. You can find these at a lot of different places. I'll link some down below on Amazon. And I just have like a medium size point and then a smaller point that I'm gonna be using to make the sunflowers. Oh, I'm actually forgetting one other thing. So I have a nail file here and I have this stick that I use just to like kind of clean up around the edges of my nails if um, I get nail polish on them, but I'm missing my little buffing tool and I can't live without that. This thing, I need to actually order some more on Amazon. It's just like a little buffing tool that I use to like file out the top of my nail and just kind of make sure it's even before I apply my nail polish. Now that I kind of told you and walked you through a lot of the products and tools that I'm using, I'm gonna get started on the questions. I love doing this and I think I was kind of overdue for a video like this on my channel. I know I do a lot of vlogs and kind of like you into my life, but I think there's a lot of questions that kind of go unanswered sometimes. So gonna dive right into it. This first question says, what do you do at your job? And there was also another one that said, can you explain what your job is further? I've heard you say you work in both marketing and sales. I work for a financial institution. I work for one of the big banks in Canada and I currently work in digital sales strategy. So I would say that's a broad umbrella within like marketing, but specifically I work for the digital team and I am responsible for a specific portfolio and the sales plan that goes along with it. I derive the strategies for selling banking products online and on your phone, which is really cool. I never thought that I would be in this space, but I love the financial industry. I have always loved money growing up. So I think I, it was just like a natural draw to work for a financial institution. I love like digital marketing because you know, I do YouTube. So my job is different, very different than what I do online here, but not quite because if you think about it, there's a lot of sales aspects to 
um, I guess, influencer marketing or content marketing. I've found a lot of synergies between what I do in my day job and what I do in, I guess, my <laughs> outside job, um, which is YouTube and, and pretty polishes as a brand. And it's been really cool to work for a really large organization and not only learn just the fundamental skills of working in like the corporate world, but in the space that I'm in, I have like that technology aspect because I work in digital. So there's so much learning that I've uh, pulled from my job and it's something that I'm so grateful for and why I do both. I've gotten a lot of questions actually, even in this Q and A, like, do you see yourself doing YouTube full time? And for this moment in time, no, it's not right for me yet. I still feel like I'm really young in my career and I have a lot more to learn. I love that I work with people that are smarter than me and that I'm learning from every day. And there's just so many transferable skills that I've learned in my job that um, I think are really helping me to build that toolkit for whatever I choose to do in the future. I still work at the same company that I have been from my internship and from um, right out of graduation, but I'm actually in a different role. So I previously was working more in a, a marketing communications role, I would say more focused on communication, both internal communication and external, kind of wore a few different hats in that role. And making the jump from my first job to my job now was a bit of a transition, but I still feel like there was transferable skills that allowed me to make that lateral move. All right, moving on to the next question. How do you balance your schedule? Do you use any auto scheduling tools? Good question. I feel like there are a ton of apps that help to kind of plan your schedule and, and help you stay really organized. I don't have a specific tool that I use, but I would say my biggest tip is to time block. So for me, I spend my nine to five and then beyond that with commuting and everything. Well, not right now, not commuting right now. I know the majority of us are at home right now in quarantine to flatten the curve of the coronavirus, but I used to spend, you know, nine to five at work and I would try my very, very, very best to be really productive at work and not have to bring any work home with me. So sometimes I would stay later or go in earlier or work through lunch to try to not bring any work home for me because it really helps me with having things outside of work um, and even just you know, trying to prioritize my own social life and having friends and family in my life, um, a relationship and having a work-life balance. Um, I try not to bring work home with me. And that way when I'm at home, I can prioritize my time doing other things. So again, sometimes it means that I have to go in earlier or stay at work later in order to get all of my work done, but it also helps me to just like focus and know that I need to get all my work done at work before coming home. I actually tried in the month of January, early February to wake up at 5 a.m. I tried for a week. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it um, on the screen, but I wanted to do that because I wanted to have more time in the morning and get more done in my day before work um, with the energy that I have right when I wake up versus when I get home from work and I'm a zombie and tired. I tried it. I wouldn't necessarily say that that's a lifestyle for me because I'm just not a morning person. I really did enjoy the experiment. I thought it was really interesting and it has helped me wake up a little bit earlier than I typically do. When I was commuting to work and physically going in, I was waking up in the six o'clock hour, not the five o'clock hour, and it did give me more time in the morning to accomplish like one task before going to work. So that's the good thing that came out of that challenge. But yeah, just time blocking your schedule. I do use different calendar apps. So I have my work calendar that runs off of Outlook. I also use my Google Calendar and I have the Google Calendar app on my phone. I use it in the schedule view um, because I like that I can kind of see all of the blocks of my day and I use that for my personal calendar um, and sometimes I'll put in reminders. I also put in reminders for my bill payments, my mortgage payment, things like that so I know when they're coming out of my account, things that are on auto pay. I don't know, it just helps me to kind of keep on track of things like that. Time blocking is something that I found that really works for me because it helps me to mentally turn my brain on and off from different topics and really focus at the task at hand. So it's not quite a tool, but something that I find really helpful. And then finally, I am just a huge list maker. Um, so I have a Moleskin notebook that I, or just any notebook, I have a ton of notebooks. I'm like the queen of notebooks. And I just make lists. I make little check boxes next to them so I can check them off. Um, and if I don't finish that 
specific like line on my in my list uh, by the end of the day then I'll like circle it and make sure I that then I put it on the next day's list so I don't keep an agenda book anymore. I know that I used to keep like a planner and I have a ton of videos on my channel with that, but I just found that because I have so many digital calendars, like my work calendar, my personal calendar, etc., and I also go from device, 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 I found it hard to like always write things physically down. So it was no longer a system that really fit my needs. So I kind of modified that. And I think my true answer to this question is that there's not one single method that works for everyone. You kind of need to try things and adjust to see what works for you and what will help you with scheduling and keeping on top of things and being productive. But those are just a few of my tips and things that I do. All right, now I am done with the filing and buffing. I'm gonna move on to my primer. I just kind of like wipe off my nails. Sometimes I'll wash my hands to make sure that I got, get all of the like fine little dust off of them from filing, but I don't want to get up right now. So I'm just gonna kind of rub them to make sure that they are smooth. I've also found that now that I'm washing my hands even more because of the coronavirus, my nails are really delicate and I need to make sure that I'm protecting them. So I always like to have nail polish on and I, I've actually found that I've been doing my nails a little bit more frequently because as soon as my nails chip, water can seep in, make them fragile and susceptible to breaking. So to protect my nails, I try to uh, do my nails a little more frequently. And I'll also show you a tip that I've been doing the last few times that I've been doing my nails to really, really protect them and make sure that they're strong. So when I'm applying my base coat, not only will I apply it to the top, but I've been applying it to the back of my nails too. I find that my nails are a little bit stronger. Okay, my next question says, do you have a boyfriend? And the answer to that question is yes. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you probably wouldn't see all of the sneak peeks. He does appear in my story pretty often. And he's been in a video here or there. Um, I know I've, I filmed a vlog of his birthday over Thanksgiving. But yes, we have been dating for seven and a half months now. His name is Christian and we met in the summer, last summer. And as soon as we met, I think our relationship just kind of took form and the rest is history. <laughs> I don't think he will be in too many videos. He makes the odd appearance on Instagram here and there, but I I am trying to keep that part of my life a little bit more private um, and just kind of enjoy it and, you know, continue to build in our relationship. I think that it's still something that is still growing and that's that. The next question says, how are your 2020 goals going so far? Well, <laughs> I think everyone's 2020 is not going as planned. Who would have thought that we would be in a world pandemic? But I think that this time has allowed me to focus on some goals while some of my other goals have been a little bit on the back burner. My goal of wanting to post more on YouTube and Instagram, this time has definitely given me the opportunity to focus on those goals while some of my other goals like going to the gym <laughs> and exercising more has kind of taken a back seat. Although I know there are so many great resources for at home workouts and I need to get into them but as of right now I haven't really but I really really need to get into them because I have been baking more since I've been at home more you know making banana bread with my leftover bananas I made chocolate chip cookies the other day I have been making whipped coffee which is definitely not good for you with all that sugar in it and then by being at home my activity has really gone down so i need to work on that and i want to increase my at home workouts and and still keep my body moving but some of my other goals have been going well um, another one of my goals for this year was to travel more so that's a little bit in question i did go to vancouver in january to visit my friend Lissa, who lives there i went with my other friend nikki so that was super fun and I have a trip planned for the end of this year to go to Europe but I don't know what's gonna happen with those plans so TBD on that I'm actually really excited because I have never been to Europe but it's just I don't, I don't know if it's good timing I don't know if I'll actually be allowed or if it'll be safe to travel at that time it is towards the end of the year but who really knows and then I don't know if it's just gonna like be a little bit tainted of an experience because of the situation in the world we're taking it a day at a time 
time that was definitely in the plan but we'll see so i applied my first coat of white tea onto my ring finger and my middle finger on both hands and then to the other fingers i'm gonna use the yellow shade so this i'm gonna build it up to be like a sheer white and it's gonna be on these two fingers kind of as an accent nail that's what i'm gonna put the sunflowers on once it's all dry and that will be kind of the final step and then the other fingers are going to just be this solid yellow. The next question says, if you were ever going to move from Toronto, where would you go? That's a really fun question. I haven't really thought too much about this because as of right now, I really love living in Toronto and I don't quite see myself moving out of Toronto anytime soon. As long as I'm going to be working in downtown Toronto, I see myself living here. Ooh, this is such a pretty shade. I think later on in my life when I want to start a family, I w probably wouldn't live downtown Toronto. I'd probably live in the suburbs just outside of Toronto and in the greater Toronto area. I'd probably want to live in a house at that point. So we'll see. Yes, I use this stick to <laughs> brush my hair out of my face uh, when my nails are wet. So we'll see about that. But another side of me would also want to live in a warmer climate. So probably still within North America, but would want to live somewhere warm. Canada's cold. Although truthfully, I felt like we had a really mild winter this year and I only really wore my winter boots like a handful of times. In a comment down below, let me know where you live and what you love most about where you live because I find that that's so interesting. I truthfully do love living in Toronto. I think I am so fortunate to live downtown Toronto. I can literally see the CN Tower from my window and I think that that is like something that still amazes me but sometimes I now like take it for granted because I'm so used to it. I love how dense the city is and being able to just walk everywhere. There's just something about that feeling that I just love. I also think Toronto is a city where you can grow up and find your individualism as a person. And I feel like that's an experience that I've had in my like almost three years. I'm going on three years living in Toronto. I moved here in 2017. So yeah, I am coming up on three years. There's so many different unique neighborhoods here in Toronto where I feel like you can really find your vibe. And I don't know, it's just always been a very special city to me. All right, I have my first coat done. I'm gonna kind of let this dry for a second before going in to do my next coat. No, I smudged it. Trick, if you ever smudge your nail, you need to lick your finger and then lightly dab it and smoothen out the smudge. So I did that and then now when I put my second layer on top, you shouldn't be able to see the smudge underneath it. All right, I'm back and I finished painting all of my nails with the base colors. So I did two coats of the yellow and I did three thin coats of the white shade because I wanted it to still appear sheer and be able to see my nail line underneath like a bit. Um, so I think it's perfect and I let it dry for a few minutes just so that I can move on to the design. It was taking too long and I, it's hard to multitask. So I wanted to just do that and come back. Um, now that they are dry, but ready for the design. I have an old business card that I usually use when I'm doing nail art. So I'm just going to put some nail polish on the back of it and then that's what I dip my dotting tools into. So I'm gonna get started with creating the sunflowers on the two white nails that I did on each hand. I'm gonna start by taking my medium sized dotting tool and a little bit of the brown shade and then use that to create the center of the sunflowers. And then I'm gonna use the smaller dotting tool, so the other side of this dotting tool with the yellow to go around. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will answer another question. This next question says, how do you do it? I know online is highlight, but you look so put together. I want to acknowledge that online is exactly what you said. It's a highlight reel. So not only me, but all of the other people that you watch or see on Instagram are only projecting the highlights of their life. For me personally, I like to project positivity. I want these videos to be an outlet for you to come and enjoy some productivity tips to be motivated, inspired. And I do that by projecting positivity to you. And of course, it's not always sunshine and rainbows off the camera. You know, I, I am a human being. I get frustrated. I get angry. I am sad. I am not always happy. I am also unmotivated a lot of the time. These videos are only, you know, that timestamp that you see of my day. 
um, or of my week. So of course it's only the highlights and I want you to recognize that and not compare yourself to other people because it's really hard to maybe relate to someone that is only projecting the good things. So I, I also try to be real with you and and show you the not so good things too. It honestly means so much to me when you tell me that I can inspire you or motivate you because that's honestly my goal and, and what I'm trying to do. But I also want you to know that I'm also a human being on the other side and I'm not always perfect. I don't always have my shit together, but I also want you to know that it's okay to be that way too. That's the reality of life. You're not always gonna have ups. In order for you to really feel the ups in life, you have to also experience the downs. That's what makes you a strong person. What's gonna make you a better person. Ooh, this is looking so cute. So yeah, I hope that you don't think that um, I always have my shit together, and I hope that my vlogs give you a glimpse of that, but I also strive for this to be a platform where you can feel motivated and I don't know, I use vlogs as a way to escape from my reality sometimes and watch somebody else's life, feel inspired again, be motivated or just entertained. Ah, it looks so cute. This next question says, do you get lonely living by yourself? If I'm not busy socializing often, I get down. I hear you and I, I can definitely see that. I just think, especially now that we are staying at home, I think that there are so many means in this world to be able to socialize and contact people and have conversations and kind of get that interaction even when living alone. And for me, I am constantly FaceTiming my family, my boyfriend, even though he lives close by, and my friends, video chatting, like texting. There's so many ways to feel connected to people. Even honestly, like turning on a vlog, like you feel like you are with someone. Sometimes I often will put on a vlog as like background noise while I'm like doing chores or a podcast. So no, I don't feel lonely. And, and honestly, like I spend a big chunk of my day at work when I was going to work pre-COVID. So I would be around people there. And I think that's another thing that I really love about my job is that I'm around people. I like have a good work environment at work. I get to socialize and learn from other people. And I'm, I don't spend my days by myself so that when I do come home in the evening, all I want to do is be by myself to recharge. I'm social and outgoing, but I'm definitely an introvert and I definitely need my alone time. All right, I have finished up my nails now. They came out so cute and I applied my top coat to finish it out. Quick dry top coat, it's a must. <laughs> Can't use any other top coat that's not quick dry. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. It was super fun for me to hang out with you and answer some questions while doing my nails. It was kind of hard at the end to do the design while chatting, so I kind of did it a little bit in and out of frame, but this video wasn't really meant to be a tutorial. I do definitely want to give you inspiration for this design, although I took inspiration from the Sally Hansen Instagram account. I just thought it was so cute for the springtime, spring into summer, and I don't know, just like add some cheerfulness to your nails, especially while in quarantine. I forgot to mention that um, after I finished up the sunflower, I did take the gold shade and just ever so slightly put a little bit on some of the inside centers of the sunflowers, but not all of them. And I think it just adds a really pretty gold touch to the design. So that was kind of how I put my own flair on this. I will link any of the products that I mentioned in the description down below where you can find them. And if you wanna use any of the products that I used today, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. I would love to have you on my channel. I was actually referring back to an old video and I forgot that I call you the pretty community. So let's start that as a hashtag so I don't forget again. Hashtag pretty community. I'd love if you join. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you in my next one. Bye.